Welcome to the Monterey Center for Spiritual Living. I'm delighted to welcome our family that is here and our guests who are here with us this morning. We appreciate you being here. And we also say thank you and good morning to those who are joining us in our extended family on Facebook and YouTube, our YouTube channel, whenever you may be watching the service. Just know that we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank God for you. Today we are concluding our theme for the month of March, which is cultivating authenticity. And our topic today is no approval needed. No approval from the outside is needed. And I offer this thought to you. When we embrace our worthiness and stop seeking approval of others, as individualized expressions of the divine, we are inherently worthy. Release what blocks us from accepting ourself, and that is our higher self, our authentic self. In recognition of Women's History Month, I've been sharing with you each Sunday empowering moments, and I focused on creations, unique creations that have been designed by women and not often receiving the credit that was fully deserved. And so today's invention that I will share with you is home security systems. During the 1960s, a nurse by the name of Marie von Britten Brown worked in New York City. And because of her profession, she worked irregular hours and came home at hours when her husband, an electronic technician, was away. Concerned about crime in their neighborhood and the lack of law enforcement, the Browns worked together to create the first home security system. Remember, this was in the 1960s, so we're not talking about a long time ago that this development came into existence. Marie's design was extensive. It featured a motorized camera that could be repositioned among a set of peepholes, a TV screen for viewing outside in real time, one of the earliest examples of closed circuit TV, and a two-way microphone for speaking to anyone outside her apartment. The security system also included a remote control door lock and an alarm that could reach a security guard. Often local newspapers accounts of the Brown's invention suggested the alarm could be used by doctors and businesses to prevent or to stop robberies. Brown was awarded a patent for her invention. And she was awarded this patent in 1966 However, she never pursued the manufacturing on a large scale. She still receives credit for her ingenuity with a significant number of security system manufacturers recognizing that her device is the grandmother of their security tools. This is an example of how we cultivate authenticity, how we tap into that divine mind, that gift that is inherent within each one of us, and no approval is needed. You know, there's no way to talk about authenticity without addressing the elephant that's in the room, and that is feelings of shame and unworthiness. Now, I know you didn't join us this morning to have the experience of a downer. You know, and, and shame and unworthiness can really drop the energy. And so my purpose this morning is to lift the energy and to see how we can transform the shame and unworthiness into the recognition of the divine expressions of spirit that we are. Shame is a universal human experience. And it is a feeling that is based in our false belief that we are not enough. It is a fear of being unlovable that convinces us that if we work harder, change ourselves, keep some parts hidden from others, and maybe then we will finally become enough. 
we will then be worthy of love and connection with others. Learning what shame is and what triggers shame for us allows us to recognize and to move through it to our worthiness. Shame can become a guide for us in areas that we do not yet love and accept about ourselves. And it is in those areas that we are seeking to work through that we have the approval of others. And you may ask, how does the principles of science of mind support us in moving through these ideas and these false believings of shame and unworthiness? One of the primary principles of science of mind is that we are spiritual beings living as individualized expressions of God, or what Ernest Holmes calls the thing itself. Spirit made us of itself and establishes our inherent worth as living beings. Our very life is the life of God. It is perfect, it is whole, and it is complete. Nothing was lacking when God created us and declared all of creation as good. And nothing was lacking when we arrived in this physical expression as newborns. And nothing, absolutely nothing, is lacking now. And I offer a couple of quotes from Ernest Holmes that establishes this. He writes in this thing called you. There is something within you beyond all doubt and fear, something which has never been limited by our acts or destroyed by our feelings. There is something that can make you whole. And then he also writes in the Holmes Papers, Volume 2, you don't have to despise your personality or say, I hate this body. I am a worm of the dust and think that you are surrendering to God. When you deny yourself, you deny God. All we have to say is, there is nothing in me but God. There is nothing in me but God. And so some acts for us to consider in moving through and identifying these false feelings of shame and unworthiness. First of all, is to identify what is standing in the way. There's an anonymous quote that says, when you know your worth, no one can make you feel worthless. Often our thoughts stand in the way of us living out loud and cause us to doubt our worth. Those dream stealers, those negative thoughts, often implanted into us by the big people that we lived up, that we looked up to for our sustenance and support as we were growing up, as we were maturing. This sense of unworthiness or our shame keeps us from living authentic, authentically and it keeps us hiding in fear and separate from others and from ourself. Exploring shame, talking about it, allows us to reclaim our power. Becoming aware of unconscious thoughts and patterns allows us to embrace and to live our worth. It empowers us to step out of the darkness and to let our light shine. Our second point is to bring light to the shadows. Knowing what triggers our shame can help us become familiar with them and knowing those times when we may be, when we, knowing those times when we may want to hang out in our head. You know, just, just to go within, it is, it's those moments that I call, oh, woe is me. You know, and, and I don't want to be around anyone. I just want to hang out and have my own personal pity party. <laughs> it is in knowing these times and knowing what triggers us that allows us to bring awareness to these erroneous ideas and thoughts and to make choices on how we respond to those. Rather than shame driving us, 
we choose to be brave. And here are a few examples of how feelings of shame that are right out in the open also are keeping us hidden. We withhold love from ourselves because we're not enough yet. And that is a future projection of fear. It's a future projection of doubt. It's a future projection that I haven't gotten there yet. And at some point, if I do the right thing, quote unquote, I'll get there. Or the feelings of shame that are right out in the open is that we're not the right size. We're not successful enough. Or when I become more productive, I will be more kind. I will be tougher. I will be stronger. I will be more spiritual. And then I will master shame. What if, just what if, what if we stop running from these feelings and become familiar with them? When we recognize the triggers, we begin to question our self-doubt. And then we no longer accept those past judgments, those past inner judgments as true about ourselves. We begin to use our courage to be vulnerable and we begin to live from our whole self. Our third action item is to claim our worthiness. Claim your worthiness. While shame causes us to question or challenge our worth, we recognize it isn't the truth. It is an invitation to be certain that we are worthy. And you may ask, worthy of what? Worthy of love. Worthy of compassion worthy of belonging, worthy of connection. These are things that money cannot buy, nor can we earn them by any degree of hard work. Worthiness is not based on what we do. Worthiness is not based on what we do. It's what we know about ourselves to be true. And so releasing what is not true about ourselves allows us to embrace ourselves more freely because we know our value. And in the process, we free ourselves from mental jail. We free ourselves from that mental jail of doubt and fear and unworthiness. I was surfing Netflix during the week, and um, I discovered a series, Fashion Forward. Um, some of you may be familiar with this series. It's very similar to Project Runway and other designer-based shows. Um, and this, for me, was an illustration of Be You. Be You. In this show, they're, they begin with, a, with a, a set number of designers. And of course, it's, it's, it's a competition. So there's a process of elimination. And sometimes one designer is eliminated. Sometimes there's a double elimination. Um, the designers have a fixed amount of time to create and present a unique fashion for the runway. Generally, they had about seven hours, maybe a, a total of 10 hours, a full day of seven hours, and then a couple of hours the next day, and then they present on the runway. And following the runway presentation, the judges, and there were celebrity judges as well as the two hosts of the show are judges also. So there's a, generally a total of four judges that will offer feedback to the designers on their creations. And of course, the winner, the ultimate winner, receives a cash prize, a substantial cash prize, and support for bringing forward their unique design and creations, both for sale and for rent. And this was what really resonated with me. Whether the designer wins or loses an individual, an individual challenge, the ongoing message from the judges is be you. And as the designers continued to progress, um, 
some days their designs would be good and right on point and just, you know, really out there. They've really done a good job. And there are other days where you could see their own doubt, their own fear, their own feelings of unworthiness that would bring them from the top to almost the bottom. And in some cases, it would be cause for elimination. And yet throughout that whole process, as the judges were meeting with the designers, they constantly reminded them to be you. And in those experiences where there had been a drop or a shift in the presentation, they really created the opportunity to say, be you. You know, don't sacrifice your design or your own unique footprint because you're working in pairs or you're working as a team, allow your authenticity to continue to come through. And this was a really uh, re resounding message for me was to allow my authenticity to come through. And it reminded me of a conversation I was having recently with a colleague. And you know, sometimes you're having a conversation and you know, it's like midstream, you'll drop this little jewel that really is just part of the conversation, at least from my perspective, but it really resonated with the other person. And they stopped me and they said, I never knew this about you. You know, I, ne I never knew that you had this type of experience. And this is what really kind of caused me to take a step back, they said, for as long as I've known you, you always seem to have everything always together. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, you show up, you're on point, you know what you're focused on, you know what you're doing. I never knew this about you. And so what that did was cause me to take a look at my own self and to ask, what mask am I wearing? What mask am I using to cover my own vulnerability? And what mask am I using to stop me from acknowledging my worthiness and being my authentic self? And so the conclusions and takeaways that I offer to you today is remember, navigating this journey of self-discovery, this journey that is called life, involves releasing patterns of thoughts, attitudes, and actions that become barriers to us standing in our own personal truth and power. We are here to stand in our own personal truth and power. And by doing so, we develop the courage to be vulnerable and to stand in that truth. It is said that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And the same is true of worth. It is in the eye, it is in the it is in the eye of the beholder. When we accept our worth, it keeps us from seeking it from someone else. When we know our worth, we're open to express and to receive authentically. Coming out of the shame closet, we see ourselves in the light and we see shame for the lie that it is. Actress Cheryl Lee Ralph says this, and she offered this doing her acceptance at a recent reward. People don't have to like you. People don't have to love you. People don't even have to respect you. What matters is that you love what you see in the mirror. So as you look at the mirror of your life, love what you see. No approval is needed for you and me to be our authentic selves. It is our natural design. And now let us share together our weekly affirmation and we will have it on our screen. Okay. I am worthy. Let us, this, let's do a call and response. I am worthy. I am loved. I am enough. And so I'd like to offer um, 
Thank you, tech team. I love it. And I like to offer um, an application of the affirmation. So this could be considered your life work uh, if you choose to accept it. And that is to create an inventory of your skills and talents, listing all the ways that you bring value to the world. Identify the skills and the talents that you have, those innate gifts and talents that bring value to the world. Begin with a gratitude list of the things that you can do and what you can be, because it's about being. It's not about doing, it's about being, and being becomes the doing. And then ask these questions. Are there parts of myself I wish I could change to increase the value that I give myself? Could it be my personality? Could it be my intelligence? Could it be my body? Or could it be my way of being? Are there parts of myself that I wish I could change to increase the value that I give to myself? So this is all about our inside work. Life is an inside job. So let us now come together in consciousness, recognizing the all-prevailing presence of spirit that is right here, right now, present with us. And as we breathe together, let us take in a collective breath, it's breathing in, breathing out. As we breathe together, we know that this life force, the very breath of God is breathing me and that I am resting in the breath of God. And I know that all is well. I know that all is well because there is a divine presence that is holding everything in absolute harmony, perfect, whole, and complete, just as it is. And as, as individualized expressions of this perfection, of this harmony, of this wholeness, and of this completeness, we each journey in the awareness that all that I need is within me right now. All that I need is within me right now. And as I release the lie of unworthiness, the lie of being shameful of something. I step into my greater yet to be, knowing that the life that I am living is the life of God. And as I know this truth for myself, I know this truth for all of those around me, that each one is living as the life of God. Expressing wholeness, expressing worthiness, expressing the joy of being the authentic expression of life, just as it is. I speak a word of blessing this morning for those who are gathering together in community, celebrating the uniqueness of each one, coming together with like-minded individuals, and also opening the door and including those who are seeking the expression of their own individual worthiness and self-sufficiency, welcoming each one as we travel this journey of life together, knowing that there are points where our path will be parallel, where it may intersect, where it may take a fork in the road, and no matter which direction we are traveling, we know that all paths lead to the source of all that there is. And so I bless communities where people are gathering in the name and nature of the one life. I bless communities that are outside of a traditional brick and mortar structure, where people are gathering in the name and nature of the love that is expressing in its own unique way, however those may be identified. I speak my word of blessing this morning for those who are experiencing the transitions of life, 
moving through the grief and the experience of the physical absence of loved ones, knowing that the expression of their soul and their memory continues to live on in our hearts and in our minds each time we think of them or call their name out. Blessing those who are in transitions that appear to be the loss of a right livelihood knowing that nothing is ever lost in spirit, that when one door closes, an even bigger and better one opens up because this is how God works. This is how God shows up as worthiness and as self-sufficiency for each one. Blessing those who are in other transitions, whether it is transitions of relationships, transitions of perfect housing, perfect choices in life, knowing that the answer to all of these is yes. That this thing called you, which is the Ernest Holmes way of identifying spirit, this thing called you is living and moving and having its expression in each one of us right here, right now, in all times and in all ways. And for this and so much more, I give thanks. I give thanks for this time together. I give thanks for the expression and that which may have sparked within each one a recognition of worthiness, a recognition of authenticity, and the inspiration to be you. This is all that is required to be you. And so in gratitude for this and so much more, I release this word now back into that law, which always says yes, knowing that it is done and it is complete. I just allow it to be. And I invite you to affirm this with me as we say together, and so it is, and so it is. But I want to take this opportunity to remind those of you who are here with us in the in our spiritual center and those who may be viewing us online to reach out to a minister or to a practitioner or to a confidant or to a loved one who you trust and just share one area of your life where you're willing to identify what may appear as shame or may appear as unworthiness and to work through that experience. We don't have to travel this journey alone. We don't have to travel this journey alone. We're here to support you and to love you. There on our website and in our newsletter, there is the contact information for the ministers and the practitioners here at the Monterey Center. We also have a world ministry of prayer through our Centers for Spiritual Living. And we also partner with Silent Unity to provide prayer support. So remember that you don't have to travel this journey alone. And just a reminder for those of you who are here in the center, uh, we do have a prayer request uh, form that is on the little side table. And if you fill out that prayer request form and drop it in the box, ministers and the practitioners will be in prayer with you and for you. And if you'd like to meet with the one of us, you can designate so. And if not, we will continue to lift you in prayer, knowing that everything is unfolding in divine right and perfect order. And now is our opportunity to share in the divine flow of prosperity. And this is our opportunity to contribute to the continuing support of this center and this community as we spread the word in the good news of the love of spirit and the authenticity of each one. We have a statement of abundance that I would like for us to share together now. I recognize the presence of God within as a source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. 
with gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. This experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And for those of you who are here in the center, there are envelopes uh, and the, the uh, seat pockets. Uh, you may take advantage of that. And we have a donation box on the hospitality table. Um, thank you for those who continue to support us by mailing in your donations. And our address is on the screen, 400 West Franklin Street, Monterey, California, 93940. You may also text to give, and I thank you to those who are of the newer generation and use the text to give feature. It's still something I am attempting to learn. And thank you to those who contribute online. And uh, you may contribute through our website, www.montereycsl.org. Thank you for your ongoing support. And just a, a couple of things to share with you. Uh, following our gathering this morning is our monthly uh, spiritual living discussion circle. It happens on the fourth Sunday of each month. And we will discuss one or more articles from the Science of Mind magazine. I encourage you to subscribe to or to purchase the magazine. Uh, the April issues are available on our hospitality table for a donation of $5. And there are a couple of issues of the March magazine that are also available. Um, visioning, we vision on Saturday mornings at 1030 for our center. We invite you to join us via Zoom. And we also vision in person on Sunday, in person and also via Zoom on Sunday mornings for our own personal goals. So take advantage of those two opportunities. Um, we're just about to wrap up the season for nonviolence. Uh, for those of you who have been following the daily statements, um, and thank you to the readers who have brought forth the statement for the particular day each Sunday during the season, and it concludes on April the 4th which is um, week after next, week after next. Uh, Easter Sunday is on April the 9th, and we will have a celebration of some sort for that. We'll be meeting with the, uh, with the team to, to look at those things. Um, and then uh, the Creative Expressions team meets on the first Sunday of each month after service, so we invite you to be a part of that. And I believe that is covering it for this morning. Ah, Ramadan, the Feast of Ramadan. We, we, we join in consciousness, and, and I know there, there, are, there are individuals who practice the teachings and the principles of science of mind that's also practice Ramadan. And so we join with our brothers of the Muslim faith and the Muslim communities and those around the world who are participating in Ramadan. And so we, as we begin, as we say thank you to our Facebook family and to the YouTube channel uh, viewers, we invite you to return next week where we begin our new theme for the month of April, which is the power of vulnerability, the power of vulnerability. And our topic will be defining and aligning with vulnerability. And just a reminder to our Facebook and to our YouTube viewers um, to help us promote and get the word out about our spiritual center. We invite you to like, and then something I was reminded of during the week in a minister's meeting that I was in, on our Facebook page, and this, this applies to those of you who are here in the center, if you watch the Facebook page, um, put four words in the comments. Four words, I like service today, or 
I was blessed by the message or whatever, just four words. And this does something to the algorithms and it allows us to get more viewers. And so we want to promote the message of the teachings of Science of Mind and get the word out about our center here in Monterey and get the word out about the love of God. And so to our virtual community, we say thank you and good morning.